why on earth are we running Reyna on Bind? Like, who thought this was okay? Ever since Bind has come back into rotation, we've seen some new agents take over the meta. I'm talking Cypher, Harbor, even Gecko's managed to sneak his way in. But Reyna? Seriously? Paper Rex is known for running some aggressive and wacky comps, but why would you pick an agent whose flashes don't actually flash, but nearsight you instead, especially on a map that's close quarters? You see the issue? And her other abilities are just selfish, and her ult sucks. I mean, there is a reason why Reyna has had a 0% pick rate throughout the entire planet. So why would Paper X bust her out multiple times in an important seeding match and the grand finals of VCT Pacific League? Twice. There has to be some secret that they're abusing that's making them run this bottom of the barrel agent. Uh, but I mean, hey, if you're lucky enough to have someone, or something, to frag out hard enough, Reyna can single-handedly carry your games. And if you want to carry your games like this Reyna did, you're going to need some help. So let me introduce you to Valorant Tracker, the sponsor of this video. Valorant Tracker is a free in-game real-time tracking app for your Valorant stats. And they show you everything. For example, in Agent Select, your teammate's stats drop down so you can adjust your playstyle to match theirs ASAP. And if you want even more information, open up their live match page where you can get an even more accurate read on how your teammates like to play. But not only is this all free, but they're also doing a giveaway right now. They're giving away 41,000 Valorant points between three winners. If you want in, you need to download the app using my link, the giveaway will pop up when the app opens, follow the steps, and the winners will be announced on July 6th. So be sure to download Valorant Tracker using my link for a chance at essentially free skins. And thank you Valorant Tracker for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the breakdown. So if it wasn't made obvious already, or you skipped the intro, Paper X are playing Reyna on Bind. Reyna is literally never picked in professional play, unless the team is trolling. I mean, if you compare her kit to other agents, she straight up has less utility than everyone else. And no, her dismiss and devour do not count. I mean, sure, if she gets a kill, then yeah, she can get out safely or heal back to full, then that's really good. But like, why not just run the optimal agent for getting out, or another one that can heal back to full? And now, don't even get me started on her ult. It's literally just a brimstone. Again, if she gets a kill, yeah, it's pretty good. But any ability that's purely situational, in this case, it's get a kill, just doesn't seem very good to me. Now, Paper X are one of the best, if not most, aggressive teams in the world. So if there was a team to pull this comp off, it would be these guys. So let's see what they got. Paper X start their aggressive pistol strat in a 2-3 zone. Their plan is to create pressure long with a cascade to deny information and a skybird flying right past it. Then they're heading back to short for a sick pistol push. And DRX are in their own 2-3 setup and they're running a KO. He's awesome at snuffing out this Viper Lurk since his knife can reach so deep into short. And on attack, he's great at taking long, hookah, and showers control with some dirty lineups. Definitely an underrated pick on this map. So Paper Rex start off with their long default, and this pushes Sky back to sight. And after causing this commotion, they immediately dart back to short to start their hit. Forsaken throws out his cascade to cut off short from the rest of sight, Jing lobs his paint shells, and he satchels into them, planning to sweep out lamps with his shorty. The push comes in, the dagger is good, and meanwhile... <laughs> And Paper Rex have taken lamps. Now here's the issue. Paper Rex aren't running a Sage in their comp. And I've talked about before how Sage makes planning on A so easy since she can just wall off shower and her team can plant. But the attackers don't have her. They have Reyna. If they just plant, they're going to get punished. And usually teams are splitting showers or having someone lurk up late. So this pressure isn't really an issue. But Paper X didn't do either of these things. So how are they going to deal with this lack of map control? Well, their plan is to take back sight. Screw showers. Forsaken throws up his high tide in such a way that it cuts off any potential showers players and isolates back sight players combined with these two brim smokes. Jing then tries to walk out of lamps and tries to camp out in the spawn smoke, but he gets shot on the back. Now with this kill, Paper X now know where the people are on sight. This is their time to strike. So with Sky coming from short and three players pinching through lamps, KO and Harbor are in for a really rough time. Clear the site and that's gonna start to bite them. Buzz still alive, they're trying to swarm him. Oh, but something's able to get that first shot onto Buzz through the box and that's really gonna open up this site now. The attackers keep good spacing and Reyna goes big for one kill back site and kills the sky rotating through spawn. And I told you guys in the intro, Paper X have some unorthodox aggressive plays and this was only the start. So both teams have been trading out rounds, but Paper Rex are now on an eco. With only a couple stingers, sheriffs, and a bucky to their name, they're going to have to abuse these close range spaces if they want a chance. Or maybe they can create some tight quarters with their abilities. They're starting in a 1-2-2 setup and are going to show the same cascade on long, but they're eventually going A. But DRX are playing this one safe. 
for now. They have the better weapons, so they're playing back and want to take the more favorable duels. They have 2 on B and 3 A, with no one really contesting any map control. And you'll see this set up a lot throughout the match. Their plan is that because they have a double initiator comp, DRX want to constantly cycle utility to gather information. If they're used in the right order, the defense can then always have a 3 stack in the right spot and contest the site. And I get the idea, but against Arena, you really want to squeeze those flashes out of her by fighting for map control. These little purple eyes are extremely valuable to her. You'll see what I'm saying. So Paper Rex start their round with their default cascade and Reyna starts to walk into shower and she's not facing any resistance. Now here's the issue. Reyna doesn't have a lot of utility. Her leers are really strong, but she only has two of them. And if you bait those out, she's literally just an agent without utility. So by playing this far back on her, you're allowing her to save her leers for the sight hits. But I mean, they do have the weapon range advantage, but is that enough to beat out her potent flashes? So Reyna manages to simply stroll her way into showers and when she takes it, she leaves and you see the ping starting to come in. None of the defense is peaking from lamps either, so they plan on using their high tide to close the distance to hopefully take closer ranged fights. But at the last second, DRX have a change of heart. They see the attackers wall go up, so they cancel it out with a wall of their own and play in front of it to fight the execute. I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of risky at this range. But do you remember the rain leers I talked about? Well, here's a great way to use them. So Paper X recognize that despite being walled off, they need to hit now or they'll lose their timing and run into a stack. So with the same exact time, you see them throw their Ray Satchel, Sky Flash, and Reyna Leer all together. Combining Reyna's Flash with other utility makes them that more impactful. I mean, what are you supposed to do in this situation? Shoot the Flash? Swing for the Rays? Turn away from the Sky Flash? I mean, you can't do that because when you turn back, there's this big creepy eyeball in your way. Reyna's Leers are really strong if not dealt with properly. But let's see if DRX can hold off this push. Until that comes out, Jing is through, there's the Leer. And yeah, the Leer is big and the spray from Foxy is good, but Divide. This was just a straight up overwhelming amount of utility, which is kind of weird to say about a Reyna comp. Harbor tried to get the tread on his KO, but he couldn't follow through. Foxy did manage to punish Rays for trying to take a close range duel and even got another through the wall, but he got spammed back. It's a three versus two, and this is going to be a hard retake against a Harbor Reckoning. Viper and Sky rotate over and slowly make their way into the front half of sight. Now after Divide doesn't take contact and lamps, Forsaken knows exactly what's going on. He rips his ultimate for him and Brimstone to pinch with, puts up his wall for front sight, but Stax isn't having it. He tears apart this crossfire, trades his Viper, and makes it a one versus one. He pops his Seekers, knowing just how important this round is, and the clutch begins. Stax alone on the site, but he oh. picks up two. And now the Seekers coming out. He knows where Divide is. Dodges the flash. Divide though, just buying time and behind the wall. Will it be enough for Stax? He tries to hold it as the Stax gets so close, but he couldn't close it out. But it was a really nice try. So because Paper Rex pulled off the Thrifty, they knocked DRX onto one of their own last round. And after getting a little greedy in spawn, they converted, and now this brings us to where we're at now. Both teams are on full buys, and the attackers have a similar plan as we've seen before. Harbor's gonna cascade long to deny info, Reyna is literally going to walk straight up into Hookah like she owns the place, and these three are going to fly into showers. And DRX are in their typical 2-3 default, but only this time, they've swapped the Rays and Viper. Is their gathering info game plan going to start working? The offense starts the round with Rays flying into shower behind a sky flash, and in 5 seconds, they took showers. Now let's check up on the hero of this story, Reyna. Yep, he's uh, he's literally walking up to Hookah. Is this really his plan? DRX, they try to check for showers. Like I said in the intro, if you have someone who's this mechanically gifted and can clear out areas of the map like this, Reyna might be worth looking into. And not only do they have Hookah now, but they're still holding on to two big flashes. DRX are in a bad spot. This kill forces KO to come back to B after not spotting anyone in Shower, but Paper X start to group up A. Showers was free before, so they contact up and get ready to hit. Trying to get from that timeout. It is so oppressive. And something, of course, with the dry beak and a hookah, he just gets the headshot. I mean, what are you going to do about that? Oh, man. I what mean, is this? Mako, I mean Here, we see another strength of Reyna's leers. So Viper tried to play in front of the Harbor High Tide and her Poison Orb to try and contest this push. But she shot Reyna's Flash. This was a horrible idea. Whenever someone shoots this eyeball, you basically give away your position. The enemies hear you spray, and they have a general idea of where they need to fire back at. And because Viper didn't reposition from where she shot it from, she got punished, and then Harbor got pinched behind Triple. I mean, without his true side anchor, he never really stood a chance. DRX tries to save, but Paper X hunts them down to deal even more damage than they've caused already. 
Now, DRX got knocked onto another Eco, but they managed to recover it by hitting some absolutely disgusting Sheriff shots. And with their thrifty win, both teams are back on full buys. But Paper X have a different plan this round. They're set up in a 3-1-1 setup. They're actually taking long control this time, but plan on applying pressure across the map before ending B. And DRX haven't changed their setup yet. 2B... 3A. They still think that by gathering a ton of info and making sure the 3 stack is in the right spot, they can fight off these strong executes. And I'm starting to think this game plan isn't going to work. Paper Rex kick off the round with a different cascade than we've seen before. In previous rounds, they use this one that denies information from anyone contesting long. The defense has to respect it because there could be 1, 2, 3 or maybe nobody behind this wall. It's just hard to deal with. But this cascade is used to actually take long control. A big issue with long is that when you cross this point, you're exposed to anyone peeking out from sight. But this cascade makes it awkward to contest and safely lets you cross this sight line. And you can add that onto the list of reasons I think Harbor is better than Brim on this map. So while those three contest long, Reyna does her signature, walk into places. She eventually flashes into hookah, but Paper X want to create pressure elsewhere just to make sure that the stack isn't that strong. So Sky, Raze, and Reyna stay back while Harbor sprints to short and he puts up an unorthodox lurk wall. This big bubble that he makes in short denies information from lamps and sight, but Viper is still feeling confident. Once again, she pushes through the wall and plays in front of it despite being punished for it previously. Pretty ballsy. But I think Viper is kind of scared. DRX think that Paper X are going to use this wall somehow because you see KO sprint through spawn to come help out. So that means that this added pressure that Paper X has created has worked. They wanted to scramble the stack, and now they have a perfect opening to slam B site. The attackers scale up long in hookah, and their hit begins. They nade back site and sprint inside, but the defense aren't just going to get run over. Foxy tells this guy to flash him in a hookah, and he pops his showstopper. That haunts you, but if you win, forget it and move on, and DRX, the team, trying to do that alongside Buzz. Okay. Grenade to the back, they're gonna put Stax and Foxy in a rough spot, but wall goes up and Foxy just gonna run into Hookah, something is there! This was a really smart play to try and secure Hookah control, but these two spread out just enough and Reyna gets the trade. But now they're faced with another potential issue. Paper X don't know how many people are on this site. There could be two more three more. They really don't have a clue. And in order to take B-Site, ideally you want to split through Hookah and Long. But without their raise, no one else can efficiently make space out of Hookah. So we thought. But if we slow this down and you look closely, Reyna pops her ult and uses this kill she just got to dismiss and come out of Hookah. If someone was here contesting Sight, they would have no idea that Reyna made it out. And look even closer. Herber also uses Cascade to make sure Reyna had cover to come out of her dismiss form. Sky doesn't know it, but she never stood a chance. But I mean, hey, the two side anchors both got theirs, and it's still a 3 versus 3. Either team can still win this. And KO just pulled up to the party, but he's too late. He floods onto site, suppresses all three players with his knife, and is trying to hold out. If he can stall long enough for his teammates to rotate from A site, they have a solid chance to win this round. Trade it back. Yeah, but they even it out to a 3v3. The spike not planted just yet, and Buzz playing to just buy time. The Reckoning comes in as well. DRX is in a good position. Oh, Buzz, fantastic angle taken as RV comes in immediately. The retake was too strong. KO mollied the right side of sight, and his harbor sent out his reckoning from spawn. This scrambled the offense, and they couldn't find some solid footing. And to top it all off, harbor threw down his cove that leaked out onto sight. By doing this, you allow your teammates to leak out on multiple choke points and forces the attack to watch so many more potential angles. This was a picture-perfect retake. After last round's loss, Paper X have a weaker buy with three rifles, a bulldog, and a judge. And this round is big. If they lose this one, they're going to lose the round advantage they've made for themselves. They're starting in a 2-1-2 default and plan on hitting A with rays satcheling into lamps. Paper X cascade long, but again head to short. Except for Reyna, because just like in our ranked games, she plans on lurking and hoping to shoot someone in the back as they're rotating to A with all the pressure her teammates are about to make. Now, I don't really know how I feel about this. In ranked, I hate it when my duel are lurking, and I'm sure you do too. But you have to understand that in Tier 1 Valorant, most plays are made with a purpose. Something is Paper X's best fragger. That's why he's on Reyna. And when you lurk, there's a good chance you're going to take 1v1s. So there's no one else Paper Rex would rather have in this role. Now let's see if the rest of his team can create enough pressure for this lurk to work. Forsaken puts up his high tide to block off showers, activates his ult, and Jing satchels into lamps. But Paper X are faced with a big problem. Their raise only has a judge, and Forsaken only has a bulldog. These aren't 
aren't really fights that the attackers want to take, so they don't peek out of lamps or short. Reyna has just become their only win condition. She's managed to walk all the way into Hookah, and Sky is the last side anchor. If Reyna can somehow win this duel, she'll open up the round for her team. The following is a reenactment of what happened because we didn't see it in the VOD. So basically, Sky went to check Hookah, but had no idea that she was peeking straight into Paper X's win condition. And as soon as this kill happens, you see the offense swing back out of lamps and they're trying to take the teleporter. Trades go down, but Paper X do manage to get out and they literally have so much free space. Reyna heads into Elbow to stall for even longer with her flash and eventually falls back to sight. Raze recognizes that Reyna isn't in a position to trade out her teammates that are just now getting to sight. If she can squeeze a kill, this round is so much more winnable. Can relay that to his seconds. team or making their way onto the side. She loses the 1v1. Paper X get a free sight plus the round win. And I never thought I'd say this in a breakdown, but it's all thanks to the lurking Reyna. Alright, if I see any of you do what that Reyna did last round in my ranked games, I'm reporting you. But this round, she's actually going to enter like a duelist should. The attacks start in their 2-1-2 default to once again drain the defense of the utility before falling back to hit a site. And DRX are still in their normal setup. Now, I'm not a tier 1 coach, but I think that they should be fighting for certain parts of the map more. That's how defense on bind is supposed to be played. By fighting for map control, you trade out utility with the attackers and force them to have less for the actual hit which strengthens your site setups. Or you can at least hold on to some part of the map so that your team can retake from a bunch of different choke points. But every round, we've seen them just try and fight back the entire execute. You're going to get plowed by a double duelist comp if you just sit back and try to stop their hit. Regardless, the attackers use their bird cascade combo for long, while Raze and Reyna simply walk their way into showers. I mean, the defense haven't contested it all game, so why start using utility now? They push Harbor off the angle, and their long players dog and cascade into long again. But the defense dogs back and spots Raze all by herself down long. DRX don't have a good read on Paper X, KO is pacing back and forth in spawn, and the attackers could really do whatever they want. So they group up in short and get into position. Stop the push from PRX. Alright, Jing just trying to fish for this harbor location, but this has allowed something to get deep into the site. I don't know if DRX is aware of this, they have no idea! Oh god, something, he just... Because none of their utility got baited out, Paper Rex rolled everyone on site. The paint shells, Leer, Ray satcheling out of shower, all of this was just too much to handle for the two players back site. This Reyna is just going unchecked, but they still haven't cleared out Viper, and with Lamps Control, this retake is still definitely doable. He just opens up the back of the site so well as Mako, still in Lamps, still with the Judge, Whoa, picks up two, and they are not able to take him down. Fox Okay, well, Viper decided to play some Fortnite and has managed to even out the player advantage. But DRX know what the setup is like. They recognize that someone is short and one showers. Sky walks over to clear out the brim, takes a few shots into the corner, and tucks back in to reload. Brim then realizes that it's his turn to pin down Sky. So he peeks out and holds right where he heard her reload. Judge and Lance will have to see what he can do. Mako is now in a two versus one, and Devi is stalling by rotating all the way from short to shower. This reposition is huge, as he knows that Mako knows he's short. So by doing this, you chew so much time off the clock. Mako realizes that he doesn't have the time for this, and he heads to try and get the defuse. Repositioning as well. The post plant continues to be perfectly played by Paper Rex. <laughs> Now, Paper X needs one more round if they want to close out the half 8 to 4, but that might be hard since they're playing against DRX's Viper's Pit. The attacks start in their 2 1 2 setup, but Harbor and Sky are going to apply an insane amount of pressure on B, and we're going to see another Lurk style play from Reyna. And the defense are setting up their Viper's Pit on short and are leaving Harbor to contest Shower. And on B, they still have Raze and Sky. Now, Paper X starts things off with a flash for Hookah, another cascade for Long, and a dog to clear out this space. In hindsight, this is what a B heavy default would look like use the Sky utility to clear out map control, and use the Reyna Leers for the actual sight hits. Now, combine this with Viper's Pit being short. DRX don't mind having a third person on B, but what this does is only leave one person holding shower. This is another one of those 1v1 opportunities and is exactly what Reyna players should be looking for to open up the round. She's managed to scale up showers once again, but Harbor did try to slow her down with the cascade, but she isn't biting. DRX haven't contested this part of the map all game, so they're going to do it now with their Viper ulted on short? Yeah, right. 
Serena keeps scaling up shower and is peeking out to sight to look for her first blood. She sees Harbor jump spouting from truck, takes a few shots, but Viper denies her with a one-way. But before the one-way can completely bloom, she leers and leaps out of shower and makes it to bench. She has no idea where the defense is set up, so you see her swinging her crosshair all over the place. Something is waiting for someone to peek into him, but then he hears Harbor rip his high tide for showers. He now knows where the first blood is, and if he gets it, the defense are screwed. Well, he's about to get a rude awakening if that is the case as here comes something on the peak. Oh, RB is in so much trouble. There it is, the instant headshot. With this kill, you see the rest of Paper X leak out of showers and take the site. But Reyna goes the extra mile and leans up against this pillar on short. Now, despite only taking showers, they kind of have a decent amount of map control. And this position from Reyna is really strong with this Viper's Pit. If anyone decides to exit from it, she'll have the advantage and kill them first. Plus, she has a great crossfire setup with her teammates in shower, and Sky could even lurk up off of her contact in short. And this is exactly what you want to see from your Reyna mains. This knowledge of how angles work and when to take space and how to hold it is exactly what you see from the world's best duelists. By simply pressing up against this corner, something has basically won his team the round. Now DRX are rotating in for the retake. They still technically have lamps control, so there is a decent chance to pinch on the attackers from multiple angles. But can they pull it off? The defenders quickly scale through spawn and know that backside is clear with a sky flash. They move up to the wall and their retake begins. But look at this, something in the corner. I'm sure they have no idea he's there as well as he is holding it down, gets the two- Reyna saves her KO and gets one more. Like I said, this was a strong position to hold with his Viper's pit up. But after the trades, it's a two versus two. But Brimstone uses his ult so his Sky can fight with it, but Stax puts her down. It's a two versus one now, and it's all up to Mind Freak. Is there enough to go for the plant? The spray is not there, but Mind Freak gets the one guy into showers and picks up the 2k! Mind Freak pulls through. Paper X ends the half at 8-4, and they end up dominating the rest of this map 13-6. All game, we've seen Reyna make play after play to lead her team to this dominating win. And I hate to say it, but Reyna doesn't look too shabby on this map. I mean, if you have a god-tier fragger like something, she actually looks great. Hmm, maybe she isn't an F-tier agent after all. Psych, she still sucks.